for mixed doubles. It's up to $850 this week. So if either of our teams should put together a triple strike, they will split $850. We've got three games of mixed scotch doubles coming up. It's a lot of fun. We hope you'll stick around here on Stars and Strikes. We'll be right back to start the match. Before chips, before cops, before rescue 911, the show that started it all, oh. the blockbuster hit of the 70s, is here on WNDS Emergency. I like you, I like you. Finding the action without the goal. Contricular stance, though. Shiny red trucks with loud sirens. <laughs> Dances in distress. When did the pain start? You loved it before. Know what you were thinking. You'll love it again. Emergency. Weekdays at 1 on WNDS. Hills 90210, weeknights at 6 on WNDS TV 50, Derry, New Hampshire. Candlepin Stars and Strikes is brought to you in part by Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Welcome back to Park Place Lanes and Candlepin Stars and Strikes. The mixed doubles teams go this way. From the bottom up, you've already met the first two teams, Mark Gregory and Janice McIntyre, Dave Richards and Colleen Macris facing each other today. The winners of this match will come back next week to face Chris Sargent and Peg Tosi, who each finished third in their respective roll-offs. The number two-seeded team is Mike Morgan and Debbie Scannell, and our top-seeded team is Gary Carrington and Johnny Brown. They will be the top seeds in three weeks' time. So the scores, by the way, that you see on the right-hand side are the combined roll-off scores for the men and the ladies. We'll give you the individual scores uh, during the course of the program, but Janice McIntyre is set to begin this year's tournament. Just slipping by the head pin. Yes. Got the four horsemen on the right. One, three, six, and ten. Last year's mixed doubles tournament here on Stars and Strikes was won by Jack Ray and Debbie Scannell. So Debbie has returned this year with a new partner, and she'll be trying to win her second in a row. We have another uh, repeat qualifier from last year's tournament, Peg Tosi, who last year was paired with John Plant. None of the uh, men who were here last year qualified again this year. And, of course, uh, you might have noticed with Chris Sargent qualifying for the mixed doubles tournament, Chris is already qualified for the Tournament of Champions, but uh, there is a separate qualification for mixed doubles. That's why they're allowed to participate in this tournament. This is a separate event, one-time-only event every year. Just sliding by and just a six for Janice. 
And now we'll get our first look at Colleen Macris from Manchester, New Hampshire. But she does most of her bowling right here at Park Place Lanes. And all four of these bowlers today have been with us before here on the Winds of New England. Colleen is engaged. So we want to wish her well on her wedding to come. Colleen works as a computer specialist for the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. And she'll shoot at the four horsemen on the right plus the eight pin in the back. Two women go markless. Just looking for our first mark of the match. Be up to the men to start a streak. Mark Gregory will be next. The two teams wearing uh, same color shirts to make it easier to uh, follow along at home. Mark Gregory and Janice McIntyre in the red and Dave Richards and Colleen Macris wearing the blue today. Hope you're having an enjoyable holiday week and thanks for taking time out to join us here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes as we move toward the new year. I want to wish everybody a happy and safe and healthy new year. Mark sliding to the right. Three, six, three, four, six left. Make it a nine. So looking for our first mark. Another little twist to this uh, format too. If Mark were to put a mark in the fourth box, then his partner, Janice McIntyre, would actually fill the mark. Only time you fill your own mark is if you get it in the last box. Well, spare leave here for Mark Gregory. Three six left for Mark. Uh-oh. Just a little too far to the left. Just held on to that ball a little longer than he wanted to and pulled it left. So it's 35 through four. Now we'll get a look at Dave Richards. Another familiar face here on the winds of New England. Candlepin Stars and Strikes is brought to you in part by Tri-State Megabucks. And now with Mega Cash, choose your dream. Tri-State Megabucks. He's got the 4-7 on the left, 6-10 on the right with a piece of wood in front and to the right of the 6-10. That's what he's going to try to do. Mm. Could not quite carry the 7. So that elusive first mark is still out there somewhere. Dave almost converting this shot. I think he put that ball right where he wanted. He just didn't get the exact break he needed. On the head pin again, and let's see where the wood fishes. Well, possibilities here. Two, four, seven, ten. Possibilities, but I wouldn't want to make a living trying to make this shot. <laughs> Go a little further left, maybe. So we'll be open the first four boxes for both teams. So now we've seen each of the bowlers once, and we're back around to Janice McIntyre. A little story about uh, Janice. She's had a 
couple of great weeks in bowling where she qualified for the show. But prior to that, we held the New Hampshire Candlepin Sweeps Tournament um, at uh, Botwell's Bowling Center in Concord. And Janice, her last game, last game of three games, threw a 166, which happens to be a personal high single. And in doing so, she won the women's side of that tournament. So, so she's had a couple good weeks. Janice from Peterborough, New Hampshire, works as a prep technician for New England Business Service. Should mention the uh, men's winner on the sweeps tournament was Don Bean. So congratulations to both Janice and, and Don. Just missing the head pin. And now converting for the 10 box. 54 through six for the team. And Colleen Macris. Seemed to get a break off the head pin, 3-6-10, which isn't bad, but she also has the four pin to the left. And no playable wood to help. And that'll be a seven box for Colleen. try on the spare attempt. Five and nine left for Janice. Colleen, I should say. And the 10 box, so four pins the difference. Still no marks on the board. Mark Gregory will try to change that now as he steps up to lane 32. Mark Gregory from Beverly, Mass. Works for the Automobile Insurers Bureau of Massachusetts. But we try not to hold that against him. <laughs> and there's a big strike. And that is the loud first mark of the day. Well, two more back to back by the team would be $850 in the triple strike jackpot. That's right. It's in effect for our mixed doubles. Let's see. No. Good bid for number two. Two, five, and eight pins left. A couple pieces of wood to the right of the five pin. He's going to have to be almost heavy on the two. And no. Eight fill on the strike, though. And a nine box. 81 through eight. So the first mark of the day goes to the team of Gregory and McIntyre, the big strike in the seventh. And now Dave Richards trying to get his team on the board. And, oh, wow. wow. Come on. <laughs> and all the wood is gonna roll away. Seven and eight. All the wood is going to, well, let's see. Oh, Dave said stop. <laughs> <laughs> and it did. I didn't know you could stop it like that. Well, yeah. he'd rather have it there than not. So that's right. On this shot. It's better uh, up there than not having it. It's still going to be difficult. No, that's nine. Missed, uh, missed the front wood, clipped the second piece before it hit the pin. So that's going to be nine. <laughs> Trying to be so fine and hit the edge of that wood. It's got a little bit too far to the left. 
So the seven pin going over did not count. A piece of wood clipped in the channel. And now the spread eagle. How frustrating is that? You miss a shot, not a spare leave really, but a shot that at least you've got a, the best rack one you've had lately. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and then right well, after like you get out. the spread eagle. Good effort by Dave on the spread eagle. Still looking at the 4-7 and still no mark. 69 through 8 for the team and a 12-pin lead for Gregory and McIntyre. Let's check out the spread eagle attempt here. Six-pin comes into the 10-pin and comes all the way back for the deuce and not quite the 4 and 7. Janice McIntyre just missing the head pin. But you'll have something to shoot at here. One, three, eight, and ten, and two pieces of wood between the three and the ten. Got to have the head pin, though. Missed it. And that's all that's left. And the ten. Missed the head pin again, but not a bad drop, although this is not a <laughs> likable leave, certainly. Well, it's look a little better with the wood staying in there against the nine pin. The one eight nine. Seen these th three pins gone when uh, when there's ten pins up there. Spread eagle plus the five pin left. That's what happens when you knock out the one eight nine. But to do it when there's three pins is pretty difficult. And again, missing the head pin. Needs one to break the, uh, or reach the century mark. And she'll do that. So 100 for the team of Gregory and McIntyre in game one. <laughs> Incidentally, for those of you who might be wondering, the teams decide which of the team members will lead off to start the match, and then they must keep that rotation for the first two games. And a near miss there by Colleen Macris. Then at the beginning of the third game, if they want to change the rotation to uh, accommodate a hot bowler, they can do that. Ten box for Colleen. She'll move to the 10th. Boy, we've seen a lot of leaves similar to this one. I mean, not this leaf particularly, but just a lot of splits and not very favorable wood. And, and missing the head pin with the first ball a lot, but when they do hit it, they lead themselves to three and one split, uh, two and one. Let's see. Good oh, effort. great effort! Oh, yeah. There it goes. Great shot. Long time coming, but finally makes a fantastic shot in the 10th frame, splitting the one and the two. Ten pin goes, then the nine, and all the way across for the seven. Well, that'll get you loosened up in a hurry, I would think. Convert a shot like that. Sliding by the head pin, though, on the fill, just four, a 93. So Gregory and McIntyre will lead by seven at the end of one game. We'll continue with our mixed doubles tournament here on Candle and Stars and Strikes right after these messages. new car. Listen to this. Nashua Ford is already offering tremendous savings on new 97s. It's true. In fact, Nashua Ford is now selling all in-stock 97 Ford cars in advance. Add up to $1,000 under dealer invoice. Buying or leasing for business or pleasure. Only Nashua Ford gives you the no-hassle way to get a new Ford. Add up to $1,000 under dealer invoice. Nashua Ford. The home of hassle-free, easy pricing. Nashua Ford. Come in today. 
Here are five reasons why the Boston Herald called personal injury attorney Tom Kiley the million dollar man. If you've been seriously injured, get the lawyers that get results. Call me, Tom Kiley, for a free consultation. On the next Babylon 5, you gave me every reason to believe she was dead. She was the woman he loved. It's time to learn the truth. Now, she belongs to them. All you have to do is come with me. Where? To Sahadu. And if she completes her mission... There's nowhere to run. No one will survive. Melissa Gilbert guest stars on the next Babylon 5. Sunday at 5 on WNDS. On the next FX. When a risky stunt goes wrong... Watch out! Ah! Angie is accused of murder. She was controlling the crane's mechanism. I had nothing to do with it, Raleigh. You believe me, don't you? Now, proving her innocence... She was set up by an expert. ...could be deadly. Kevin Dobson and Cameron Dotto star. On the next FX The Series. Tonight at 7 on WNDS. On The Hitchhiker's Next Tale of Terror. She's in love with you, but you're just using her. A gigolo con artist. I'll do my best to fulfill your expectations. You may have finally met his match. You're using me. We're using each other. But you should never con the con man. She knows too much about you. Or should you? Now they're all mine, thanks to you. Lorenzo Lamas guest stars on The Next Hitchhiker. Tonight at 10 on WNBF. <laughs> Candlepin Stars and Strikes is brought to you in part by Coca-Cola Classic. Always the real thing, always Coca-Cola. We're back on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Dave Richards will lead off game two for the team of Richards and Macris. They're trailing by seven. And looking for their first mark of the match. I take it back, looking for their second mark. They got the spare in the tenth of game one. And not quite on the touch. And a nine box for Dave. This is what happened on the spare attempt. Just not enough to kick it forward for the five pin. And Dave has a solid nine drop and nearly a strike. Well, he had pins dancing all around that nine, but nothing touched it. Watch out for this wood out in front. The piece of wood closest to him is way out in front. Now, now it's moving back, and Dave's <laughs> directing with his foot. He's doing everything he can. Got a clear shot, but he probably wants to try to avoid that wood or just clip it on the bottom piece. Too high. Oh, oh he got it. Wall. That extra wood there. A little margin of error. A smile from Dave. Dave thought he might have missed that. Mark Gregory now on lane 32. No, there's the 189 we were talking about. <laughs> See how easy it is? <laughs> you just don't have to be shooting at it. Spread Eagle plus that five pin in there. If you're going to shoot at it, I'd rather have the five pin. No. Mark apparently would rather wouldn't. Oh, I guess not. <laughs> Which I don't want to shoot as a spread Eagle with one ball left. And an eight. No, no. Mark opposite the spare that Dave Richards put up there. Oh. A little high, but he got away with it and he got a strike. Wow. Kind of threw his hands up. He knew he was a little bit high at the head pin. 
And when the 10 pin went out, he got a good break there, right there. But it continued on over into the four, and then finally the two for the strike. Colleen Macris filling the spare left by Dave Richards. Colleen's having trouble getting her ball to come up toward the head pin. Drops seven on the spare. Got the one, seven, and eight with some favorable wood behind, which should help her. Let's see. Yes. Two marks in a row for the team. First time today that's happened. Just catches enough of that head pin and utilizes the wood effectively for the 7 8. That time she got the ball to come up into the pocket and leaves the triangle. Seven pins on the spare and the two, four, and five left. Trying to go three marks in a row, three spares. Looks pretty good. Yes. Three spares in a row for the team of Richards and Macris. Now, Janice McIntyre filling the strike left by her partner, Mark Gregory. Off target to the right, still looking at seven pins. Remember, she's working on a strike. Oh boy, look better than that. Half dozen on the strike. Richards and Macris will take over the lead in the match. Bring that run of three marks in a row together. They now lead the match by five. And that will be a six box for Janice, 37 through four. We will take a break. The team of Richards and Macris catching fire with three straight spares. We're just about at the halfway point here on Stars and Strikes. We'll be back. Nashua wants to help spread the holiday cheer this season with savings to you on new Volvos. Choose from their selection of 1997 Volvos, the largest in New England. Right now, take advantage of their low lease rates like Volvo 850s for only $239 a month or Volvo 960s for only $299 a month. If you have a truck in your sights, choose from their huge selection of 4x4s, Chevys, Fords, Jeeps, Toyotas, and more. Drive safely this holiday season at Volvo of Nashua on the Daniel Webster Highway, Nashua. She was the first. Mary! Next came the little dog. Ah! I'm back here, I think I'm fine, my feet! Ah! And from that moment on, the terror never stopped. As of 9 o'clock this morning, there have been 62 reported sightings. Ah! Blood ah! Feet, today at 3 on Movie Watch. On the next Columbo, it's a vintage year for murder. They found the body this morning. He, he drowned? I don't think so. Oh, he still suspects you of killing your brother. Do you suspect me? Didn't your family ever um, drink wines at home? I'll tell you, the closest we ever came to it was my father's job during Prohibition. Bootlegger. Now he was a tail gunner on a beer truck. Donald Pleasance and Julie Harris star on the next Columbo. Tonight at 8 on Movie Watch. 
Here are the winning numbers from last night's Tri-State Megabucks drawing. Candlepin Stars and Strikes is brought to you in part by Tri-State Megabucks. Once again, bringing you the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. We are back on Stars and Strikes. We had the bowlers continue during the break. Dave Richards with a couple of 10 boxes. Mark Gregory with a spare, six fill and a nine to help cut into the deficit that his team faces now. And now we're back around to Colleen Macris in the seventh, game two. She's looking at the three and the seven pins and all kinds of deadwood around. A couple, two or three pieces behind the three pin, another one in front of the seven. Got a shot at it. Yes. Oh, without using the, much of the wood. Well, Colleen has caught fire a little bit here. That's her third mark in a row. She had two last time she came up and put that one right on the nose, the 3-7. Now for the fill. Oh, oh my. The one and the five. You want to hit the head pin, but I guess you take your chances. That doesn't happen very often. Two more. Three and nine. So she's hit the object pin, the first ball, the head pin. I'm sure she was shooting for the three pin that time. And she still owns four pins. Oh, boy. And it's a five box. So that negates the spare and gives an opportunity to Janice McIntyre. Richards and Macris, as you see, leading the match by 12. And Janice will have a spare lead. One three six left for Janet. Piece of wood rolling back. Should not have any play in the spare attempt. Let's see. Yes. Very clean conversion there for Janice McIntyre on the one three six. Put her hands up. She'd been struggling most of the day and was excited about making that spare. Now the fill. That was Janice's first mark of the day. Looked like a pretty good ball going in. Crossed over a little heavy on the head pin. Six drop, three, six, ten with a seven pin in the left hand corner. Well, the good news here for Janice is that she's opposite a five box so she can cut further into the lead. It's already into single digits. Ten. Wow. One ball too late. Didn't figure it would go that way either. Usually you try to split the three to the six. This time she's to the left of the three. Domino effect and something comes flying across into the seven pin. The lead for Richards and Macris is down to three now. And Dave is shooting at the three, four, six, and seven with no wood. He's that type of bull. He's just going to keep fighting them all day long. You know, count him out. Make it one of these. Usually when you're struggling like this, you can make one of these cut shots. It seems to loosen everything up. It's not very far off his, his target. A little heavy on the head pin. Candle pin stars and strikes brought to you in part by Coca-Cola. Always the real thing. Always Coca-Cola. And there's a half Worcester. And he was off target on that one. Dave works at MVP Sports. And look out here. Look out here. <laughs> Not quite enough. Actually, I almost pushed the 10 pin into the uh, channel, but not quite stood up. Ten box, 117, and a two game total of 210 for the team of Richards and Macris. So that will give uh, Mark Gregory a chance to give his team the lead here. He throws a mark here in this final two with a good fill on it. Well, he's got the four horsemen. If that wood is going to be a help or a hindrance and Kind of resting a little bit between the two and the four. Right. 
Yes. Yes, very nicely done in the ninth. Gives them 98 plus the ball. It's three times in a row, the team of Gregory and McIntyre is marked on lane 32. Now the fill and possibility of regaining the lead. Uh-oh. Mark threw his hands up. He knew what was going to happen. Spread eagle. And this is going to be an extremely close match. It is indeed. In fact, if uh, Mark were to get only one of these three pins, we'd be tied. But he takes an extra one, a nine, a 112, and a two game total of 212. I'd make it 211, I beg your pardon. Two, 111 is the score, and 211 for Gregory and McIntyre. So they have just a one pin lead after two games over Richards and Macris. And we'll be back with the third and deciding game here at Park Place after these words. Volvo of Nashua wants to help spread the holiday cheer this season with savings to you on new Volvos. Choose from their selection of 1997 Volvos, the largest in New England. Right now, take advantage of their low lease rates like Volvo 850s for only $239 a month or Volvo 960s for only $299 a month. If you have a truck in your sights, choose from their huge selection of 4x4s, Chevys, Fords, Jeeps, Toyotas, and more. Drive safely this holiday season at Volvo of Nashua on the Daniel Webster Highway, Nashua. When your windows don't fit right, it's the right time to call WeatherTight in Reading, Mass. True manufacturers of high-performance vinyl replacement windows, like double hungs, bays, bows, and gardens. WeatherTight also manufactures over 150 styles of insulated steel doors and carries a full line of vinyl siding. Call WeatherTight now and qualify for free window installation. We have 100% financing and accept all major credit cards. Call 1-800-505-2875. 1-800-505-2875. Holiday time. Buick has saved the best gift for last. The last great car clearance. Your last chance to get a dynamite regal with 2,000 cash off or incredible 09 financing. Your last opportunity for special incentives on America's number one selling LeSabre. Plus, buy any new Buick. Your first payment isn't due for 90 days. But you better hurry. All the smart buyers are headed to the key Buick dealers of New England right now. Are you in the market for a new home? Then tune in to the Real Estate Home Show every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. right here on WNDS TV 50. You'll have the opportunity to preview wonderful newly constructed homes for sale throughout New Hampshire and Massachusetts. Every Sunday morning, bring today's exciting real estate market right into your own living room. Join us this Sunday at 11 a.m. on WNDS TV 50 for the Real Estate Home Show, leading the way to the best new homes for today's home buyer. Mark Gregory will start game three for the team of Gregory and McIntyre. They lead by one pin over Richards and Macris. Pretty good ball by Mark that time. Leaves the two and the five. Trying to protect a one pin advantage. No, he's got it. That's six marks now for the team of Gregory and McIntyre. Needs a oh, break, and break. he gets it. He's been hitting the head pin on lane 31, but full, and that time again full, but got a little bit of break coming back. Leaves himself just a 2, 4, and 7, but you got to watch the wood. Almost want to miss the 2 pin, shoot the 4 in the wood, have the wood kick forward for the 2 pin. Yes. Oh, plays it on the right. Carried it right through. Nice shot by Mark. Two in a row. Seven break. marks now for the team. 
You can see what the reaction of that two pin with the wood in between went right to the sidewall, but just enough to catch the seven. Oh, Dave Richards with a big first ball. Leaves a solid 10 pin. And gets it for the spare. Well. Yes, uh, both teams waiting for the other one to wake up. <laughs> the wake up call has arrived. Right back in the pocket. Oh, uh, nine pin drop. Oh. And this time the nine pin to try to go two in a row to match the two marks put up by Mark. And there it is, two more. And the lead. Back-to-back -back marks. And we'll be back on Candle Pit Stars and Strikes. Don't go away. with AT&T, are you? No, I'm not. No. So, are you happy? No. Not really. I was happier with AT&T. Well, we're making it simple to come back. How'd you like to get 100 free minutes just for switching to AT&T? That, that would be wonderful. It's right. free phone time, and I like to talk. And you can use them to call anywhere in the United States? Yeah. That's a real gift. Well, there's a lot more. Introducing the new AT&T one-rate plan. Know why we call it that? Just one rate? That's right. Just 15 cents a minute on calls from home to anybody, anytime, anywhere in America. That's great. It's, it's a flat rate. Day, night, weekend, whatever. Anytime, anybody, anywhere. Pretty simple, huh? That's exactly what I want. You don't have to sit and think, am I in, the, in this time frame? Um, should I be calling on the weekends? It's freedom to call who I want, whenever I want. Now, I'm going to presume there's going to be a charge involved. No, it's free. It's even better. All you have to do is call. Uh, they open today. <laughs> 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We're all looking to see what is it. What are the restrictions? See any fine print down there? No. That's because there isn't any. No fees, no minimum spending, no time requirements. No restrictions, no games. There are no loopholes there. It's plain and simple. You know what you're getting. You can't beat that. Plus, you also get AT&T's world-class customer service. I've always thought they had great service. Always very responsive, friendly. I mean, I appreciate that. So what do you think? I think it sounds like they're a great plan. There's no restrictions, no limits. I would go with it. I will definitely switch. Call 1-800-PICK-ATT. You'll get one low rate, plus 100 free minutes for switching to AT&T. I think the 100 free minutes is awesome. <laughs> one rate plan, it's excellent. I love it. So what are you going to do? Pick up the phone and switch to AT&T. I'm switching back to AT&T, and this time I am not going again. You know what to do. One rate, 100 minutes. Call 1-800-DICK-ATT to switch. We are back on Stars and Strikes. We had to duck away quickly for time considerations. Here's what you missed. Janice McIntyre with a spare in the third, a seven fill, a nine in the fourth, and then uh, Colleen Macris with a 10 and a nine. And you see that Gregory and McIntyre have added 10 pins to their lead in the match. They now lead by 11 as Mark Gregory steps up in the fifth box here with a big nine drop. Everything but the eight pin. I don't know what kept the eight pin up. A pin off to the right, out in front of the eight pin, but can't get by. And if it clipped a little bit of that wood, I think the ball would just go right through. Yeah, and it does. Exactly. Spare in the fifth. That's three, four marks out of the first five boxes in this final game. They're leading by one, as you can see, 211 to 210 coming in, but. That's nine marks for the team now of Gregory and McIntyre. Oh, pretty good looking ball, but not much to show for it. The five, eight, and 10 with no wood. 79 first half in this third game for Gregory and McIntyre. 
That's a good score in the mixed doubles, scotch doubles format. Be a 10. But some catching up to do for Dave Richards and Colleen Macris. Already trailing by 11 and opposite a mark here in the fifth. And look out. Oh, that's a big one. The first strike of the day for the team of Richards and Macris. And it comes at a great spot. One, two pocket, the five, the eight, and then finally the seven. Huge mark for Dave. Looking for two. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, How close can you come without getting a double strike? Well, let's see. Dave Richards has thrown four boxes in this second game. He's thrown two, three nine drops and a strike. And the three nine drops have all turned into spares. And just when you thought that Gregory and McIntyre were going to run away and hide, the lead is now just eight, as you can see. But Dave also has put the mark up for Colleen to fill. So this match is a long ways from being over. Janice McIntyre for her final two of the day. Oh, wow. That two pin slid right over. Two and four are just almost right together. but. The good part is the wood there is he just may be able to get that wood over into the 10 pin. Yes. Oh. Great shot. Well, that two pin moved over six inches off the spot. Might have made that shot a little easier. I think it might. Uh, I think you're probably right, Doug. Now the fill. Oh, he pulled it. This time the seven pin sliding a good six inches. Just three on the spare. Uh-oh. <laughs> and Janice will take a seven, but only 20 pins for the two boxes. And a chance now for Colleen Macris to give her team the lead. Well, they're all big balls, but this is a huge one right here because she's working on the spare. Got the ball up there. Oh, yeah. An eight fill to tie the match. And she's off Actually, to take the lead by one. Opposite a spare three, but then just a seven, so it's really two ten boxes. Actually, that tied this game. It left Richards and Macris one pin down. But they'll fall behind again with the spare here in the seventh, but only by an additional three pins. So it's just a three pin difference at this point. And she's opposite a seven. So uh, she could tie the match up without. Well, the reason we had a little of confusion on the scores there is because we had a discrepancy on the computer. That's being corrected now. Two important pins here for Colleen Macris with this match so close, and she gets them both. So that will make it a one-pin match. Now the scores are as they should be, and it is a one-pin difference with two boxes to go, and... Mark Gregory and Dave Richards will decide this thing. And Mark drills out the half Worcester. One pin going to the last two frames.
every pin important. Mark gets an eight box. What that means is he cannot force Dave Richards to mark unless he marks. If, right. uh, if Mark Gregory should go open here in the 10th, Dave Richards could win it with a couple of 10 boxes. Didn't get on the head pin. No, he's got the four horsemen left, but that's the good news. The good, bad news is the 10 pin is also up there. Clutch mark in the 10th by Mark Gregory. Four horsemen plus the 10, and there was no doubt about that one. What a shot. Now he wants the head pin right here. That's what he wants. Remember, he's been full in this lane 31. He got a break last time he was a little full, but... It's eight or nine anyways. Well, That's he got big. it in the pocket for an eight drop. And a little touch on the two pin, but it stays an eight and a 135 for a three game total, 346 for the team of Gregory and McIntyre. Now it's just a question of waiting to find out if that's enough. 136 is a win. That means Dave has to have a mark. 136 would be a tie. Right. So he needs 27 to tie, 28 to win. He wants that, well, he wanted the wood out in front, but he didn't want it to turn. Well, it did move out, as you see, but it's now rolling backwards again. Yeah. He's got to go after the 610 and maybe catch that wood. Ooh. But that was the problem. When you catch the wood, you deflect the ball around the 10 pin, which could be an important pin, too. Important that he get one of these, yes, too. That's right. To help set things up for the 10th. All right, 118 through 9. Remember, the target score he needs is 137 to win the match. 136 would tie it. So he needs a, a mark and an 8 to tie, a mark and a 9 to win. Right oh, in the pocket. Yes. Oh, my. Well, obviously, a strike would have been better. He would have had two chances to make his fill, yeah. but now he's got to watch out for this wood. This wood way out in front. The ball's going to fly on him. You almost want to slow the speed down, but now he's too far right. Oh, my. Dave can't believe it. He thought he had made it. It'll be Mark Gregory and Janice McIntyre advancing. What a match. Both teams started slowly, but they certainly heated it up here in the third. 338 for Richards and Macris, 346 for Gregory and McIntyre. Mark and Janice will advance to next week's second match in the Tri-State Megabucks Mixed Doubles Tournament, an annual event here on Stars and Strikes. We will be back with our bonus ball contest. We don't want to forget about that and to chat with our winners when we return in a minute. Snow tubing at Amesbury Sports Park. A great way to spend the day. Your backyard might be bare, but not here. The guns are always going to keep all 11 trails covered in snow. When it's time to warm up or grab a bite, you can visit the cafeteria or come upstairs to the Power Play Grill. Enjoy some wings, salads, or full meals and choose from 250 beers from around the world while warming up. The snow guns are always going at Amesbury Sports Park at exit 54 on Route 495 in Amesbury, Mass. Subspace transmission, Starship Enterprise. Picard, Captain, Top Starfleet Operative, Riker, Second in Command. Lieutenants, Highest Efficiency Factor, Data, Troy, LaForge, Worf, Beverly Crusher, Chief Medical Officer, Wesley Crusher, Acting Ensign. For additional transcom, consult Star Trek, The Next Generation. Night at 7 on WNDS TV 50. 
Derry, New Hampshire. It's time again for First Night New Hampshire, the New Year's celebration of the arts. This year, for the first time, both Manchester and Concord will be participating. Buttons are on sale now throughout the state. Come join WNDS-TV personalities Al Caprillian, Carl Paling, and Randy Goldberg at the Stark Mill Brewery for a night of fun-filled festivities. For more information, call 224-1411. We are back on Candle Pen Stars and Strikes, and uh, boy, this match started slowly, but uh, six marks for Mark Gregory and Janice McIntyre in that third game, and it was enough to win. Well, it's, you know, it's one of those things that the format uh, has a tendency to have the lower scores, but uh, the excitement's still there. Absolutely, no question. Uh, let's go to our bonus ball contest. We're running a little short on time today, so we want to make sure we give somebody at home a chance to win our jackpot, which is now worth $80, and Mark Gregory is going to throw our uh, bonus ball today. Over on lane 31, we'll see if we get a match here, and then we'll talk to our two winners, Mark and Janice. Eighty dollars on the line, and look out, it's a strike. Well, can you pull out a 10 there, Dan? Let's see. We're reaching into the barrel, and well, it was close, an eight for Helen Mailman from Gardner, Massachusetts. Thanks to Helen for writing in. She'll be receiving a, uh, a consolation prize from the Winds of New England and from the NHCBA. Mark, congratulations, and uh, Janice, congratulations to you as well. Uh, boy, the third game did it for you. You were able to get off to a quick start and put some marks together. Oh, we were able to get some last uh, few breaks and a couple breaks from them, you know, and uh, we started clicking as a team, so. I'm, I'm guessing, though, it was toughest for you, Janice, because you finished first and had to sit and watch everybody else bowl, and it came right down to the final box. Yeah, it did, and I was pretty nervous, but we did it. Well, you seemed to cure that nervousness a little bit in the third game. You were you were throwing the ball much better, it seemed, in that third game. Yeah, I think I got the nerves finally worked out. <laughs> be ready for next time. That's right. So you'll be all set for next week. Uh, Chris Sargent and Peg Tosi will come in. We'll see you then. Should be a good one. All right. Thanks, Mark. Congratulations. Thanks, Janice. Congratulations to you. The first win under their belt. And that means that uh, next week it will be Chris Sargent and Peg Tosi coming in. And uh, that match could be very, very interesting. Uh, this team with a, a win already in the books. And uh, Chris and Peg should be very tough competition. These two are all warmed up. And uh, they'll need it because that's a tough team coming in. All right. We will see you next Sunday for our second match in our mixed doubles event. Don't forget. Saturday at noon from Pilgrim Lanes in Haverhill, we will have another edition of Candlepin Skins. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole crew, I'm Doug Brown. Have a great week, everybody.